Hi, I'm Andy, and I'm a crew member on the James Craig. I'm going to take you through some theory about the sails on the James Craig. This is intended to help people learn it, to learn how our sails work, how to set them, uh, and how to find the lines. This will be the first of a series of videos. Uh, in this video, we're going to focus on basic square sails. Then there'll be a follow-up video that will go into the details of the square sails we have on the James Craig. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a generic picture of what, how our sails work and what they look like. And then we're going to show how that pattern is repeated over and over for each of the square sails on the James Craig. Uh, and then the third and fourth videos will do the same thing again, but for staysails. So in the third video, we will uh, build up the theory and the general pattern for staysails. And then in the fourth video, we will go over all the details of the, the actual staysails that we have on the James Craig. Uh, then there will be some follow-up videos where we will extend that theory to uh, the pin diagram. Basically, we'll write down a set of rules for how we should be able to find the lines on the deck. And based on that set of rules, we will build a pin diagram from scratch. And what you'll see is that that pin diagram that we build actually looks exactly like the pin diagram uh, that's in your book and the actual places to find the, the lines on the ship. So we're going to just start with a really simple ship. This ship boat, whatever you want to call it, has only one mast and one sail. Sorry, I'm going to make this sail big so that it's easy to see. This is a square sail. We're going to use some terms to describe the parts of the sail. And I'm going to give you these terms. I'm going to write them down on this diagram. But I don't want you to stress about them. They're useful for a couple of reasons. They're useful for you know looking at a sail and explaining to somebody what you're talking about. They're also useful because some of the lines or ropes that we use are named after the parts of the sail they're attached to. And that's why I'm going to put them on this diagram. Now that said, it's not, they're not super important. If you don't remember them, don't worry about it. Focus on the lines and how the sail works. Don't worry about the names of the parts of the sail. You can always come back. This is our square sail. The bottom of the sail is the foot, bottom edge. The top edge of the sail is the head. The left and right edges of the sail are generally referred to as the leech. Uh, those are the edges of the sail. The body or the middle of the sail is referred to as the bunt. And the corners, the bottom corners of the sails of the sail is called the clue. Okay. Like I said, don't stress about remembering those names. Okay, we're going to draw in some lines. I'm going to use two different colors. Uh, we're going to start with the important lines for the most important lines for the sail. Uh, and those are the sheets, which pull the sail down, transfer the drive of the wind 
in the sail to the ship. And I haven't left myself much room here, but the halyard, which is the line at the top that we use to pull the yard up. Let's stop there for a second. Why? Why would I want to hoist my yard? Why not just fix the yard to the top of the mast and, and work like that? Well, it turns out, particularly for a small boat, that moving this yard, which is generally fairly heavy, uh, all the way to the top makes the boat slightly less stable. This is less of an issue when it's sailing because the wind in the sail holds the boat stable. And also, typically, when you're sailing, conditions are good. If conditions are really bad, you're probably going to reduce or totally take in your sail. And so then you also probably want your boat to be more stable so that it can't be tipped over. And so lowering the yard to be closer to the, sh to the deck of the, the boat makes the, the boat more stable. It basically lowers the center of mass of the ship. And so this is why traditionally yards are hoisted. So. These are the most important lines for the, sh for the sail, the halyard and the sheets. All of the sails on the James Craig generally are set the same way, and that's in a two-step process. Two steps. The first step is hoist. Sorry. That is not correct. The first step is pull down. And we generally pull down with the sheets. And the second step is hoist. And that is done with the halyard. OK, so two step process to set a sail in the James Craig. Pull down, hoist. In the context of a square sail, the yard is down, sails bunched up around the yard. First, we need to pull it down. We do that by pulling on the sheets. Okay. And once we have pulled it down, then we hoist it up. And in the case of a square sail, that means we hoist the yard up. And to hoist the yard, we pull on the rope that hauls the yard, the halyard. So my unfortunately very short halyard, which comes down in the background here. Oops. It's a deck. That is the halyard. I can spell really. Okay. Now, of course, at this point, you're saying there's a lot more than three lines to work a sail. Yes. So what we have not, what I've put on here are the important lines for the sail, for actually making the ship sail and for setting it. OK. What I have not put on here are the lines which we generally refer to as the gear. The gear is responsible for taking the sail in. The gear is responsible for holding the sail before it's set, all that sort of stuff. So when we come on board, the sails are all wrapped tightly around their yards. That's called furled. We go aloft, and we untie the gaskets, and we unfurl the sail. The sail is pushed or falls off of the yard, but it doesn't fall all the way down. It just falls a little bit below the yard, and it sits there. And at that point, the sail is said to be in its gear. And that gear, just help you out here a little bit by sketching this, when it's in its gear, it's generally actually kept quite close to the yard. So if I have my yard, it's not hoisted. And what this looks like is the sail kind of So it kind of looks like a bag. It's kind of folded in. 
Sorry, this is a terrible drawing of a sail in its gear. Uh, and what we have is, is that the bunt of the sail is actually what's hanging down here. The leech, or sorry, the foot, the bottom edge of the sail is actually held up here. And it's held up by some lines that are tied to the foot of the sail. These lines are called buntlands. And they're often actually also tied into the middle of the sail. So there might be, might be a ring here that maybe attaches some of the middle of the sail that's folded up inside there. Okay. And most of our sails have two buntlands and two bunt leech lines. This will become more obvious in a second here. So I'm drawing as I put these on the actual set sail. But these are what's holding the sail up. And the last bit that's holding the sail up are the cluelands. They're tied to the clues of the sail. This is what it looks like furled, but that's impossible to see. So let's draw these in on the set sail so you can see what they look like. So we have two bunts. Like I said, they might be tied into the middle of the sail. They're tied to the foot. When the sail's set, these hang loosely down. And we have two bunt leech lines. They go down. They're actually, they go through a loop that's tied to the bottom of the sail. And then they come back up and they are tied to the leech or the edge of the sail. Hence the name bunt leech lines. Okay. So that's uh, most of the gear. And then we also have, uh, whoops. We have the markers mixed up. That'll be fun. We also have the cluelands. The cluelands are tied to the clues, the corners of the sail. And they go up, and then they go through a block, and they run along the backside. All of these lines run um, near the yard uh, to the mast, and then from the mast they come down to deck. And we'll talk about where they go later. And there's a clue on both sides. The other one's behind the sail, so you can't see it. Okay, in the same way that this halyard is behind the sail. Okay. Okay, so those one, two, three, four, five, six lines are the gear for the sail. Deckhands, new crew, these are the lines that you are going to know, learn, and love by heart to begin with. So, like I said, when this is what it looks like when it's set, and when it's Furled, these all pull in, and it bunches the sail all up close to the yard. Keeps the wind out of the sail so it can't draw, can't propel the ship. Let's just do some basic commands here about line handling. So we have ease, which means hand over hand let a line out. We have haul, which means hand over hand pull a line in, or sweat it on the pin, or both. And we have um, let go, uh, which basically means take the line off the pin and literally let it go. Okay. Now, obviously, if you let go of the wrong line, you're going to have a mess because things can go bad quickly if you drop something from a loft, uh, which is what letting go could do. So what I generally recommend for all crew is that if you're told to let go a line, what that really means is ease it away until it falls off the pin, and then you can let it go. But you should not just let go any line, um, partly because we all make mistakes. Watch later may tell you to let go the wrong line. And or you may have the wrong line. You may have gotten the wrong line off the pin. And so if you ease away until, like I said, until it kind of falls off the pin, then you're guaranteed to be OK. Whereas if you let go a line that's under tension, It'll go wrong, but if that line remains under tension as you ease away, then nothing bad's going to happen because you're easing away. Okay? So with those, those commands in mind, what we will do is step zero, go aloft, unfurl the sail. Come back to deck. Then when the commands are given, we will um, let go the 
bunts, bunt leech lines. We will ease on the clue lines. That allows the sail to start coming down. And we will haul on the sheets. So again, that was let go, bunts, and bunt leech lines. Ease, clues, and haul on sheets. That pulls the sail down. Once the sail's all the way down, we then will hoist the yard, and we do that by hoisting, pulling on the halyard. So we're going to haul away on the halyard. So one more time, that is let go, bunts, and bunt leech lines, ease, clue lines, haul on sheets, that completes step one. Step two, haul on the halyard. Now you might say, gee, there's a lot in step one and not much in step two. Well, that's because step two requires a lot of crew. So all those crew that were doing all the various things in part one are now all going to go and, and help pull in part two. Uh, on James Craig, it depends a bit on which sail it is, how many crew are actually required. Um, it is possible to set every sail on the ship with only six crew. Um, you'd be exhausted, but it's possible. And that's purely based on what is the absolute minimum number of people you need to hold all on a series of lines, ease the lines, haul on the lines at the same time. What do you have to do all at once? Six crew. Okay? So this is basic sail. Uh, and that's how it's set. Um, let's just talk briefly about taking in sails. Taking in sails is almost always exactly the reverse. So when we set the sail, we did step one, we pulled down, and we did step two, we hoisted. When we take in the sail, we're going to reverse this hoist. So we're going to let the yard come back down until it's resting at the bottom of its travel. And then we're going to undo step one which was to pull down, so now we're going to have to pull up, which is the opposite. And to pull up, what we're going to do is we are going to ease away the sheets. We are going to haul on the clue limbs. And then we are going to haul on the bunts and the bunt leech lines. And we basically keep pulling on all that stuff until our sail is back bunched up against the yard, like my terrible diagram shows. This is the basic theory of a square sail. All of the square sails on James Craig work like this. And so if you can get this in your head, in the next video I'll show you how to think about the exceptions in such a way that you keep the same pattern in your head and the sail is set, handled, taken in in the same way. This isn't terribly complicated. Yes, there are Six lines of gear, two sheets, and a halyard. There's nine lines here. Um, but we actually work them only in as kind of three groups. Um, three or four, depending on how you think about it. So the gear generally is all worked together. The sheets are worked together, and the halyard is worked together. Those are our three groups. Gear, sheets, halyard. And when we're setting sails, it's in that order. Handle the gear. Handle the sheets. Handle a halyard, and when we're taking it in, it's the reverse. Handle a halyard, handle the sheets, handle the gear. Okay? I can't ask if there are any questions, so if there are any questions, you know, feel free to ask your watch later or talk to me. Uh, send me a message, whatever you'd like. Happy to answer questions. Um, if we get some good questions, maybe we can do some videos about them. But, you know, this is the basics. Let's move on to the more advanced stuff in the next video where we're going to talk about uh, the 10 square sails on James Craig and how they all follow this exact same pattern, uh, but each ha they all have some minor exceptions, which I'll help you to understand. Thank you for watching, and good luck.